Now, as some of you may remember, if you've seen my old video on why you should learn karate history, or if you've taken a look at my demonstration of Sakugawa no Kon, I don't just practice Goju Ryu. And I'm not referring to my cross training, although I've taken Aikido, Kendo, BJJ, Kaju Kenbo, and a few other types of martial arts in my day. Instead, I'm talking about the indigenous weapons techniques of Okinawa, practiced by the Pechin class of Ryukyuan aristocrats, which are collectively called Kobudo. Many of the karateka who passed their arts on to us also trained in these weapon techniques to further their understanding of self-defense. Unfortunately, when karate blossomed in popularity in the 1930s and 40s, Kobudo faced difficulties since it wasn't so easily adapted to the sport and competition realm that modern martial arts was becoming. Kobudo practice, which relies mostly on outmoded police weapons from Okinawa and China, isn't particularly useful for self-defense, but the solid design and simple technique of the weapons prevented them from being adapted to allow safe sparring, like the Kendo Shinai, or from being used in acrobatic performances like the Dao Swords of Wushu. However, Kobudo has survived, and while it's not as popular as karate, many dojos have incorporated it into their curriculum. Certain Kobudo weapons have even made their way into the modern consciousness, such as the Nunchaku, made famous by Bruce Lee, or the Tonfa, made famous by every police department. While Kobudo may not be useful for self-defense in the modern day, it still has a wealth of cultural information and serves as a great conditioning exercise for the modern karateka. I personally have trained Kobudo for around 10 years, and it's been a wonderful supplement to my Goju Ryu and my general strength training. Like karate, there are a number of different styles of Kobudo, and the style that my dojo taught was Matayoshi Kobudo. While it may not be as well known, this style of Kobudo has a lot of overlap with Goju Ryu. So today I want to take a brief look into the style, its origins, and the surprising connections that it might have to your training today. This is the first and only episode of History of Matayoshi Kobudo. Let's get into it. Before we dive into the style itself, it will help if we know a little bit about where Kobudo comes from. While many teachers will repeat the common myth that the weapons taught in Kobudo come from farm tools, most historians agree that Kobudo weapons were purpose-built for fighting, either in the military or by law enforcement. Some weapons, like the Sai, are based on Chinese weapons, while others, like the Tambo or Jo, come from Japan. Most of the weapons of Kobudo were practiced and taught by the Pechin, a class of aristocrats in the caste system of the Ryukyu kingdoms. Many of the Pechin were disarmed by King Shoshin, or when the kingdom was invaded by the Satsuma clan, but these policies generally only extended to certain weapons, and often only prohibited carrying weapons publicly. However, because of their duties to defend the king and higher-ranking officials, it was expected that the Pechin would know various unarmed and armed fighting styles. As time went on, many of these Pechin families taught their martial arts to wealthy students, leading to these arts being spread among the upper class of the islands. One such student was Matayoshi Shinko, the son of a Shizoku family, who was born in 1888. Because of his family's status, as well as their wealth from the sugarcane trade, Matayoshi was able to learn several weapons from Kobudo masters across Okinawa. Matayoshi Shinko-sensei began studying as a teen, learning the Bo, Sai, Kama, and Eku from Gushikawa no Tiragua, before studying Nunchaku and Tonfa, also sometimes called Tunkwa, from Jitude Mushigawa Ire. In his early 20s, Matayoshi made a trip north through Japan to Hokkaido, and from there to Manchuria, where he would learn the art of riding a horse and shooting a bow and arrow, as well as techniques for rope throwing and the use of the shuriken. He returned to Japan in 1915 to demonstrate Tonfa and Kama alongside Funakoshi Gichin, the Shotokan pioneer, and would also demonstrate alongside Miyagi Chojun-sensei in 1921 for the crown prince Hirohito. Matayoshi-sensei also traveled to Shanghai, where he studied the Suruchin, Nuntibo, and Timbei, and also practiced Chinese medicine and an empty hand technique called Kingai Nun. He would pass on many of these styles to his son, Matayoshi Shinpo, before passing away in 1947. Matayoshi Shinpo-sensei began learning from his father at a very young age, and was also taught by Kyan Chotoku, one of the masters whose teaching became the basis for Shorin Ryu. He also began to learn Kingai Ryu, which may have been connected to the White Crane style practiced by Go Kenki, a family friend of the Matayoshis, as well as a close companion of Miyagi Chojin. Matayoshi Shinpo began teaching in 1945, but by 1969 or 1970, he would found the Kodokan, the Hall of the Enlightened Way, taking the first character Ko from his father's name. He would eventually form another organization, the Zen Okinawa Kobudo Renmei, to preserve and spread the weapon system that he inherited from his father. Matayoshi Shinpo never taught the full Kingai Ryu system of empty-handed martial arts, 
which, with his death in September of 1997, seems to have died out partially or entirely. However, he did focus extensively on the Kobudo system, which now thrives all over the world through the International Matayoshi Kobudo Association. At present, the weapons taught in this system include the Bo, Sai, Tonfa, Nunchaku, Eku, Nuntibo, and Kama. Several additional weapons, such as an 8-foot Bo, the shorter Jo, and the three-section Sansetsu Kon, as well as other specialized weapons, are taught to more advanced students as well. Because of the work of Matayoshi Shinpo-sensei, the weapon styles of the Ryukyu kingdoms have been preserved for future generations. Thank you for watching this video on the history of Matayoshi Kobudo. If you enjoyed it, you might also want to check out my History of Goju Ryu series, where I talk about the karate style that has made up the better part of the last two decades of my training. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, and while you're down there, leave a comment letting me know what topics you'd like to see me cover next. If you want to see more of my videos, including any future History of videos when they come out, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification icon so that you don't miss when I upload. I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and go swing those nunchucks!